my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. It is the end of July and I am filming my empties video. This morning I am drinking Bella Luna from Adagio Teas. This is their special full moon tea that I've been waiting to get my hands on for ages. It's a coconutty Earl Grey. So you have, I mean, you have the black tea base. You can definitely taste the bergamot flavor in here. It, it's kind of balanced and subdued by this coconut and cream and I think there might be vanilla in here but definitely coconut and cream flavors it's just so it's so nice oh, I love this tea okay let's get into it first is the matcha sticks from Adagio teas I did a, a whole video on these a couple of days ago um, where I went through and reviewed all eight of these so make sure you check these out. Next was the chili lime coconut green tea from Adagio Teas and this is another one that I have a review on. I wasn't the biggest fan of this when I tasted it on film but it kind of grew on me. I even cold brewed this. I cold brewed this and and it was actually pretty good. This isn't like a tea that you just drink. You have to be like, you have to be craving or be interested in this experience to, I think, appreciate this tea. I'm that, it's just that odd that that's just what it is. And then I didn't officially, I didn't technically do a review on this, but this is the apricot black tea and I was drinking this in my last um, empties video. It's similar to Adagio's peach black tea. I mean in flavor because apricots and peach are similar but even in, in how I experienced it and that um, it was fine but it wasn't my favorite peach or in this case apricot black tea. I hope my neighbors don't mind that I have their house in my video. We have black dragon pearls. The website, the Adagio Teas website, said that this was supposed to taste like chocolatey and earthy. My notes on this uh, were that it tasted earthy and mushroomy. I always feel sort of odd whenever my tasting notes are different from everybody else's. It always makes me doubt myself as somebody who drinks tea or prepares tea. Next we have rhubarb green and this is a fruity green tea. Um, with with strawberry and rhubarb flavors in it. I thought the flavors in this were just sort of muddled. Like I, I kind of expected a sweetness, sweet strawberry flavor and the tart rhubarb and I really didn't get that in this. Then we had a rooibos earl grey. They had like a Captain Picard day where you can spin their wheel and if you land on a spot then you get a free sample. And I did, I landed on a rooibos Earl Grey. And I gotta let you know, I love me some Star Trek. Uh, when Oliver can't sleep at night, when he wakes up at three o'clock in the morning, I'll take him out into the living room and I'll pop on some Star Trek. Uh, just cause I love the ambiance, I guess. I mean, it's sort of a quiet show, I guess. But I'll pop that on and rock him and rock him to sleep and you know, I can usually get a, an episode in at that time and sometimes I'll fall asleep during it. So I was excited when they were doing Captain McCard Day. Um, also, I just love Earl Grey tea. So this is a clever twist on it, or this was an interesting twist on it. It was a uh, rooibos tea, orange peels, natural bergamot flavor. I thought that the woody vanilla flavors that, that, are, that are typical of a rooibos really paired well with the citrusy bergamot flavor. The last of my adagios is these jasmine pearls and these are just um, it's green tea scented with jasmine and they've just been wound up into to, to, into balls into pearls this was in a tea bag but I but I cut the tea bag open and brewed these uh, I steeped these loose which ended up being a really great idea because these just unfurled into these really beautiful big leaves. I ended up getting three steeps out of this. I could have gotten a fourth and possibly even a fifth. The first steep was probably the most prominent um, in terms of the sweetness from the, the green tea as well as the floral jasmine flavor. The second and third steeps mellowed out just a little bit. You lost, I think, the sweetness from the green tea, 
but the jasmine uh, the jasmine flavors weren't just like in your face. And on to the rest of them. First is this peach Mai Tai from David's Tea. I don't know what about this made it a peach Mai Tai. I've never had Mai Tais. I guess I thought this would be a little bit more tropical, uh, like the name would suggest, like a peach-based tropical drink, but mostly it just tasted like a peach black tea. I feel like kind of comparable to their just peachy tea, if my memory serves me. Next we have these vanilla nut, a roasted herbal tea, vanilla nut from Tea Chino, and these came in my a Sip Spy box from forever ago. I love this stuff. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. It has carob, barley, chicory, dates, almonds, figs, natural vanilla flavor, and natural nut flavor. And the thought process behind it is um, it's for the people who love coffee and that coffee flavor but are trying to avoid the caffeine, <laughs> which is me. And, I mean, does it taste like coffee? I mean, not like spot on, but it definitely has some coffee vibes to it. And with some, with some sugar and some milk. Oh my gosh. This is good. This is so good. This is something that I would house in my collection. It's that good. Next, we have Sally's Secret from Harney and Sons. Maltiness of the black tea is cut by the oolong. The bergamot is really light, and I'm searching for the rose. I wasn't really that impressed by this tea, I guess. I loved everything that was in here. It's just that it was, the flavors, again, I think were really just sort of middled. Like, I, I didn't get any, I didn't get anything that was like rosy. The bergamot was just really understated. On the flip side, I also drank their Paris tea, and this was amazing. It was a fruity black tea with vanilla, creamy caramel notes, and just a little zip of that bergamot flavor. Next, we have a Sencha from T2 Floral Dry Summertime Grass, slightly sweet and smooth. Next, we have Caribbean Crush. Um, which I've had before uh, on this, on my channel, and, and I think my very first what I drink in a day video. This was like the last tea that I tasted. And you know what? My opinion is the same. This is, why don't I have this in my collection yet? That's what I wanna know. And then we have Earl Grey Chai from Tea Box Teas. This is, Black tea, ginger, cardam or cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, and bergamot oil. This was really good. Um, have you ever had a speculoos cookie? Uh, or like if you've been on an airplane and, the, and you get served those Biscoff cookies? Or if you've gone to, what is it, is it Trader Joe's or Whole Foods? They have that, that cookie butter. I've never had it, but I think I would love it. And so it's probably best I don't bring it into my house. Um, but that's what it tasted like, just like a speculoos cookie with, especially with the sugar in the milk, like I loved this. It didn't really taste the bergamot in it, it just really tasted like, it was more spiced chai than Earl Grey, but still a really good tea. I really enjoyed this. And then last but not least is this Teala, I don't know how to pronounce it, Teala Rosa Bianca from T Fiori. This was by Mudan White Tea and Rose Petals. I haven't had positive experiences with white tea like ever. And I've always just convinced myself that it is because I drank so much coffee that um, my taste buds, <laughs> were inept at picking up the delicate aromas that were found in white teas. So I went into drinking this already under the mindset of, I'm not gonna enjoy this experience. Second, uh, the first time I drank this, it did taste like hot water. It tasted like peppery hot water. I, every, every time I brewed myself a cup, I went into this thinking like, I gotta drink this peppery hot water again, but I'm just gonna drink it because I need to get this out of my collection. The very last steep that I did, I decided to cold brew it. I didn't take any notes. I couldn't tell you the tea to water ratio. 
Um, I'm gonna say that I probably let it steep for about four or five hours. This ended up being one of my favorite, if not the favorite teas that I drank during the month of July because of that cold brew. Like that cold brew alone has made me completely reconsider white tea. When I cold brewed this, all of these different flavors that were not present in the hot tea surfaced and it was just like it, it blew my mind the initial flavor that came through was that was was something that was peppery and then it sort of transformed into this juicy refreshing cucumber and then at the very end it was just like this really beautiful sweet floral rose it just made me think of english perennial gardens just like an english garden i'm really bummed that after the first time i drank it i didn't check myself and say you need to brew this differently to see if you can appreciate it. I waited until the very last deep to change how I brew it and then I ended up appreciating it and then regretting that you know that the other three times that I drank this I didn't drink it I guess with intention almost. So that's it for the month of July. That's 15 teas out of my collection. If you're doing a sip down, how many teas did you uh, polish off this month? And which were your which were your favorites? Leave me a comment in the box below. And, um, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.